How are we doing, folks? Welcome to Basics with Babish. This isn't how I normally do the beginning of the show, but we have a special guest with us here today, Isaac Toops of Toops Meadery, Toops South. Is that, did I get them both right? You got them both right. And he's here today to teach us about Creole cuisine. Cajun? Cajun cuisine. <laughs> decided to put my diet aside today. Right. We're going hard. Yeah, me too. Uh, so we're making rions, we're making jambalaya. Jambalaya. We're making dirty, dirty rice. rice. And chicken and sausage gumbo, right? Ah. Well, I, I, I was just spent a week in New Orleans and now you brought a little bit back for me. That's right. Because I was, I already miss it. It's only been two days. I don't miss the, I don't miss the heat. Oh God, it was soupy down. Yeah, that's, that's, that's summer in New Orleans for you. Um, all right, so what are we doing here? Okay, uh, we're cutting up our Trinity. And what is a Trinity? Trinity is very similar to the French mirepoix, mm -hmm. uh, except we switch out the uh, carrots for bell pepper. Because basically, this is what grows around Louisiana, not so much carrots. So we use what we have around us. We have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but don't forget the Pope, garlic. It's just Never heard that Funny before. stuff. Oh yeah, I, I heard someone else say it. I'm like, I'll be using that, that's funny. <laughs> We're just gonna give these just kind of a, a medium dice, nothing fancy because this is all gonna get cooked down and stewed, so even, even if you mess them up just a little bit, it's not that big a deal. So I just tell people, just give a rub chop. Don't worry about it's something fancy like that. Just chop it. All right, I do okay here? You did great. Thanks. Thanks, Isaac. You're welcome. Is it just me or does Holy Trinity smell better when it's sauteing than... Absolutely, when it smells so good. When you're, in fact, when you, when you start to roast it, it's exactly what like Cajun country smells like. Yeah. Like when we start making this dark crew, when we add our vegetables to the dark crew, it's like, I'm just gonna bring you back. It's like, ah, that's my mama's house right there. And I'm guessing we're not adding the garlic till like late in, the, late in the game. We're gonna add the garlic right after. In fact, that's a good talking point that remind me to bring up that we're gonna add the garlic after we add our Trinity because we don't want to burn it. And they're gonna be very, gonna be very careful when you're chopping the garlic. You, you don't want to. Whoa! That's my, that's my favorite joke. That scared the ever-loving. Yeah, it does that. I know. I know. I do that every time. Wow. I, I want to try that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's super fun. If I can do the same without bring, slicing bring, my hand bring open. Bring it to the edge. Bring it to the edge. All right. Just Bow. Like this. And nope. Oh, didn't Harder. give it enough. Harder. Let me do. Let me do it the right hand because left hand is a little uncoordinated. Let's try again. There you go. Better. A little better. Let, yeah, me, try, that, let me try one more time. Let me tell, tell you, put, put some power behind it. Yeah, no, I did it with the left hand. That was a mistake. Ready? Good. Yeah, take those frustrations out. You, now, and now we have garlic on both of our aprons. We're garlic buddies. Okay. Garlic buddies. Hashtag garlic buddies. Okay. All right. That was cool. All right, so we got our holy trinity. We got our trinity. We got our... We got, uh, we got, our, we got, our, we got the pope. The pope. Garlic. Let's make some roux. We discussed you're going to make a 15-minute dark roux. Mm -hmm. How do you make a, a dark roux so quickly? Uh, I make a dark roux really quickly. I actually got it to under five minutes because I'm a psychopath. Holy. But it's dangerous. So I, I suggest everybody take, if this is your first roux, yeah. take it low and slow. Make the 45-minute roux. So you're just doing it hot? We're, we're going to get the oil smoking hot. Okay. And then we're going to add our flour. Now, to this, you got to have everything near you. You got to have your, your deglazing beer. You got to have your trinity. You gotta have your stock all by your, by yourself. Because if you walk away from it, you'll burn it. And once you burn a root, there's no going back. You have to start all the way over. Well, I'm gonna be very interested in seeing how this goes. Yeah. And sorry, just because I love symmetricality, I'm going to... All right, so we got this like a cup, cup and a half of... Yeah, about a cup. I'm gonna make a little extra right now so we don't have to make it uh, root two times for, for the show. Very cool. A lot of people use a wooden spoon. I prefer a whisk. Mm. Uh, wooden spoons are j just fine, but I feel you can really get a good stir pattern. You know, I also have a little sauce whisk that might help you get in the corners. Sauce whisk? Like this, this is a little better for getting in the corners if you want. Well, let's, let's try that out. Give it a shot. And when we burn it, I'll say, it must have been the whisk. <laughs> You're welcome. Right. I'm here to give people outs. So we're just letting this guy get smoking hot. Uh huh. And then I'm 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 terrified. I'm very excited to see you do Don't this. Don't be scared uh, of the room. I would I would burn it instantly if it were that hot. No, I'm not saying I'm not going to burn it. I'm saying I'm probably not going to burn it. I'm probably not going to burn this. No, he said I've I've done I've done this so much. To just I know what to have, and I'm pretty confident with it with it now. It's not hard. It's not scary. If people think it's just you're dealing with hot oil, but they'll deep fry some chicken. I'm like it's just as dangerous. That's true. Yeah. You know how to make something cook faster? As a stare at it. You yell at it. Hey hey come on. A little faster, please. <laughs> hey, hey, you. That's not working. All right. Yeah, we got some. Now. We, we got, got some, some smoke. Okay. Yeah. okay. 
See, we already got a good, fast reaction. Nice. And what's the consistency you're looking for? The thinness you look, of You're this? looking for wet sand. Wet sand, okay. Yeah, for, for lack of a better term. Yeah. Oh my God, this already smells. So, yeah, so exactly. So Within, good. what, 30 seconds? Yeah. We've already got the, the milk chocolate roux. That usually takes 15 minutes. This usually takes 15 minutes, well. and we just got it to 30 seconds. Yeah, wow. So the darker it gets, the more often you want to stir it. You don't have to stir this perpetually. You can actually let it go and brown a little bit. Uh, a lot of mistakes are made if people stop right here. Yeah. And you'll get pale gumbo, and then I will judge you harshly Good. for it. Let your, let your roux get nice and dark. Don't be afraid of it. That is pretty much like wet sand, isn't it? Yeah. I love analogies. That's why I like to say, you know, take your dark roux to the color of a Hershey chocolate bar. Yeah. I say that because everybody can get a Hershey chocolate bar. In fact, this gumbo, if you can get chicken and sausage, you can make this anywhere on the planet. Yeah. And, if, and if you want somewhere on the planet and can't get chicken and sausage, move. It doesn't have to be pork sausage, it could be beef sausage, it be like any that. kind of sausage you'd like. I like a good smoky sausage. So, yeah. Switch out the chicken for uh, for turkey. Yeah, if you can't find andouille, I found uh, you know smoked kielbasa is a good Perfect, uh, exactly, exactly. Use what you got around you. Kielbasa, andouille, chorizo, charisse. You'll be just the same. That's okay, already about, looking chocolatey. Look we're, we're about halfway there. All right. It's been a couple of minutes. It has not been long. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're going to hit uh, five, six minutes. Probably Easy. Five, five, six minute mark. Yeah, no problem. So you're letting it sit a little bit. Which just, a, just a little bit. Just to stop. Still not walking away. Yeah. And the darker it gets, the more I'm going to stir it. Yeah. And like my daddy says, if you've never burned a roux, you've never made one. <laughs> which which means sooner or later, the, your, your time's in trouble. You make enough roux, you're going to burn one sooner or later. Yeah. This just happens. And then you know what you do with that? You just start over. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Just about dang near perfect. Yeah. Now, what, what color would you call that? Um, I would call that getting into dark chocolate, like 65% pure cacao. Okay. That's a bit technical for me, but <laughs> I like where you're going. We're just setting aside a little bit here for the uh, dirty rice later on, or the jambalaya. Jambalaya, dirty rice. We're actually going to turn that the dirty rice into jambalaya, rather. Now, you notice I threw my bay leaves in there because I want that, that, that caramelization to take care on the bay leaves themselves. It's going to extract a whole bunch of that flavor. And this roux is so hot. Smell that. That's Cajun, that's that's, Cajun right yeah, there. No, that, that takes me right back down yeah. to New Orleans. And now, normally, you would have to sweat this for a good long time in, in a pan. Yeah. But this roux is so molten hot that you can already tell these vegetables are starting to caramelize and break down. Yeah. Ooh, thing of beauty, right? It's almost like they're semi-deep frying, but there's so much moisture I, in there that they're just like... I, I don't think that's that's too far off from the actual truth. They're, they're pretty much kind of deep frying. Yeah. Oh, man, look at that. That color is perfect. I'm, I, I can't wait to, do, to make gumbo again. Last time I made it, it took me 45 minutes just to get my roux where I wanted because <laughs> I was being so dainty. Be, be so dainty about it? Yeah. Right, now, that, now, that, now that it's calmed down a bit, mm -hmm. this is when we add our garlic. We're going to add our garlic now because we would added it sooner. Mustn't it, burn it. it. It'll burn. Yeah. How, how long are you letting that garlic go for? Probably just another 30 seconds. Yeah. And then we're going to hit it with our beer. All right. Use any kind of beer. Just don't use a light beer. Yeah. Light beer, no flavor. Yeah. Now, what's the most important thing about cooking? Drinking. Taste your food. Now, just like any time you're messing with any kind of roux, you want to stir your liquids in and whisk it. Otherwise, you'll get clumps. Now, dark roux is a lot more forgiving than a blonde roux. So when you're making bechamel, you really have to like Take your time, and you really have to, uh, you know, make sure you're whisking it properly. Dark roux is a lot more forgiving. Why don't you stir me in some of that right. stock there? There you go. Too gentle. Pour. Too gentle. There you go. You want all this? I want all that. All right. Possibly more. Now let's add our, got your chicken and our sausage. Let's get to it. And our spices. Yeah, after you get the roux done, it's pretty set and it's, forget it. It's, yeah. Yeah. Just got to get past the one tricky part and you're good to go. Ooh, it smells good. I'm going to snack on this. Yeah, let's, let's see what quality we're working with. Oh, that's fine. It's got smoke to it. That's really, that's fine. really all that matters in this. Well, not all that matters, but that's 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 going to give got, it that. It's got good fat, got good flavor. Mm -hmm. It's smoky. Teamwork. Oh, when man, man, we're good. Ooh. Here, throw splash. away, yeah, away from you. Away, yeah. That's what I love about cooking. You can go your entire life and still learn something new. Oh yeah. The golden rule about salt and spices is that you can always add a little more later. Yeah. So if you're worried about it, don't add, don't add so much. Whoa, Nelly. See, that's that's why you don't pour right out, right out of the bottle. Yeah. You can under season, but you can't you, you can't over season. You can go forward, you can't go back. Can't go backwards. Yeah. Now we are, are we leaving all this foam? Does the foam get scraped off? No, 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 no. We, ne we I've never scraped the foam off any damn thing. <laughs> now once it's once it's up to temperature, you want to pretty much turn it down 
to the lowest simmer possible. You want to get some real color on these? Yeah, get some real color on them. Yeah. Here, here's a, here's a lesson about how much black pepper goes in gumbo. Here, go ahead, start. Oh, I have a feeling I'm about to have a arm workout here. Isaac, <laughs> my arm burns. I'm kidding. Jeez. There you go. See, the first time you had to stop and change, okay. it's perfect. perfect. That's that's the that's the goal. The first time someone goes, "Good God!" I'm like, "Ah, perfect." Like my arm's tired. Perfect amount of a perfect amount of black pepper. Wow, you don't, you're not going to read that in recipe recipe book, except for maybe years. Exactly. I think I think it's actually in mine. A little smoked paprika this is going to like just kind of a double down on our smoky flavor. So we probably got about a tablespoon each of cayenne. And yeah, sure. I'm not measuring. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, nor should you. Ne never, never have I measured like a, a gumbo at the house. Now, luckily for you guys, I actually measured it from my, from my cookbook. So I'm going to check out that recipe there, be my guest. But going back and measuring stuff when you've never measured stuff, boy, that was a lesson. We finished browning off the chicken. We added it to the, the pot. Chicken. We add it straight to the pot. Don't worry about chopping this stuff up because this gumbo will be pretty much done when this chicken starts to fall apart. Not to mention, it's going to all the juices it's going to release inside the pot are going to reinforce that stock and make that gravy even better. Yeah, andouille's going in. <laughs> don't don't add the andouille with a buddy. Yeah, you got again. Don't be scared. Get right over it so there's no splash. Yeah, I wasn't scared. I, I, I wish we'd keep all this chicken fat in here. Do something with that. Is there anything to do with that? Yeah, save it and we'll saute our vegetables. And I'm guessing we're also never skimming fat. On it. We're not going to skim the fat. Unless we have some sort of super excess amount of fat, yeah. I never skim it. All that fat has all the flavor. Oh yeah. So you never want to completely skin it. But we got a big oil slick. I'll skim some of it off. But when you have a fix a bowl of gumbo, it should have a little bit of oil on there. And people yeah. people notoriously skim it all off. I'm like, taste that oil. I'm like, oh, this oil tastes great. I'm like, exactly. <laughs> Throw it in there. So I'm gonna save that oil for the next dish. Yes. All right. Let's let's lid this up and let's push it back. Bring this to a simmer. Bare simmer. Bare simmer, and just gonna let it slow roll for a couple hours. Probably only need about maybe an hour, maybe a little bit more than that, because if you don't cook out the roux, then you'll, if you tell you what, let's do a science experiment. Yeah. A little bit of that gravy. And it doesn't actually taste very good at all, does it? Oh, no. Yeah, it's no, pretty, it's, it's, it's it's pretty it's bitter, bitter and raw. It's bitter, it's raw, it's chalky. But people ask me, why do you have to cook it so long? I'm like, that's exactly why. Yeah. So uh, cooking is gonna allow, A, that's going to allow the uh, the chicken to break down and all those flavors to melt, and the roux has to cook off. The same with the bechamel. And also, this is going to thicken it up over time. This is going to thicken up a little bit over time. But at the same time, you don't want it thick like gravy. Yeah, no. Rions. Rions, otherwise known as uh, candied pork belly. It's uh, if Cracklins had a uh, you know a sluttier sister, that's that's what this would be. So it's like really rich. It's pork belly. It's red wine, salt, and uh, and sugar. So it's essentially pork belly caramel. Oh. This right. sounds great. Yeah, alcoholic pork belly caramel. All right, so we got, uh, how much pork belly do we need here? Because I have two pounds. Two, we need two pounds of pork belly. Look at that. <laughs> we got skin on this, so. Skin on this, that's okay. I know how to de-skin a pig. Now, if we were making cracklings, we would leave the skin on and we would cut these up in pretty much the same shape. You pretty much want, uh, you know, maybe a, a one, one and a half by uh, one inch. Keep them for the crackling, but this is not cracklings, that's another video. I'll have to come back and show you those. Okay. Oh, so you do it upside down, I see. Uh, I, I think, I think like, um, like, like playing, playing fish. Okay. If you think about it. Yeah. So I hold on to the fat and then bring it toward me, and just like you, just like you're skinning a fish. It's worse like a dream. Once, once you've had to do it a whole bunch, you find out like the easy way to figure out now. Well, that was the easiest I've ever gotten skin off belly. So thank yep. you for that. You're welcome. Just toss this in the pot. Toss it in the pot. Let's do it. And uh, we're just gonna, we're just gonna toss this in the pot for a little. Toss it in the pot. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that's not gonna be tasty at all. No. Dude, that is gonna. I like your attitude. Oh my God. Now we lucked out, we lucked out and the butcher gave us a nice fatty parts because uh, honestly, the fattier parts of the belly are always gonna make, well, everything better. Yeah, I mean, we're eating this for the fat. We're not eating right. this for a little bit of meat on there. I mean, it's nice to have it on. It's nice to have a little, a little bit of meat, but, but, but the fat's where it's at. So we're gonna take ours and so, so let's say we, some of them are cut like this and some of them are cut like this, that's okay because what we want to end up is pretty much around the same size. Okay. So. It's nice. Let's let's aim for that. As long as they're remotely the same size, you can be 
a little larger, a little small, but I, I, I think of once it's cooked down, what's one bite? You don't want to have to bite a rion in half you want, you, or a crack on in half. You want to be able to pop the whole thing in your mouth. Yeah. All right, done. Perfect. All right. We add very unceremoniously, plop. Just a bit, bit of salt, not as much salt as, uh, as I'd say if we were doing it to, for a, a seasoned dish, but just like all, even pastries, even sweet stuff, you always add that pinch of salt to bring out the flavor. You gotta have the sweet salt. Sweet, sweet the salt, absolutely. So we're just gonna give that just a little, a little random mix, just let that salt suck up in there, because when we pour over the red wine caramel, if we did just salted it, it might actually rinse it off. Oh, okay. So we're just gonna let that sit we'll do that. just for a second. And we have, as you specified, some nice cheap red wine. Cheap red wine. You do want something uh, full bodied, so a Malbec, a Cab. We got a Cab here. Just like you don't want to use light beer, didn't have a lot of, lot, lot, a whole lot of flavor, you want something intense. If, just, if I put red wine in something, I want to taste the red wine. Okay, now that we got our pork belly um, seasoned, we're gonna add our sugar. And I know we don't like to measure, but just like roughly, what are we Oh, two cups? Two cups, yeah, it looks about right. two cups. Because, well, here's the trick. If you make a little too much uh, caramel, you're fine. Yeah. If you make too too little, you're, you're, you're not fine. So yeah. you might as well, if you're going to make make this stuff, not to mention the shelf life's great. Might as well do it. Might as well do it. Let's add some of this red wine. All right. Do we want any salt in, in this? Nah, not worry about it. All right. And uh, we're just bringing this to a simmer? Or what are we we're going to actually uh, bring it to a, a rolling boil, and we're actually going to bring it down just a little bit to really concentrate it. So it's going to be more viscous and more syrupy, so it sticks on the pork belly and not just cooks around it. Yeah. It'll, it's also going to reduce more in the oven. So as the caramel starts to get tightened in the oven, we're going to toss it so, it, so the ones on top are going to be pale and the ones at the bottom might be burnt. Yeah. So that's why we're going to toss those pretty regularly so that caramel evenly coats the pork belly as it cooks. Oh, look at this. This is cute. Tiny Whisk, folks, you heard tiny it here. Whisk. Tiny Whisk is, the, is, tiny is whisk. The, one of the most popu popular characters on the show, I more popular it. than even me. <laughs> Not very unceremoniously, just pick some time in there. It adds a really good flavor to it, really make a compliment. Now, I've tried this, this is the original recipe. I've tried this with white wine, I've tried it with whiskey, I've tried it with a bunch of different things, but honestly, nothing beats just the sugar and red wine and thyme. Good to I'm know. Not exactly sure why, but sometimes if it ain't broke, don't fix it. All right, take, grab that caramel. Okay, all right. And this is just going to stir over top? Pour, pour it straight on top. Try, try, to, try to coat all of it, but we're going to stir it anyway. Oh, that looks good. Oh, yeah. All right, we're just going to kind of pack these in there a little bit. Nothing fancy. Just make sure they're nice and snug. See how it's snug? Snug is the word. Snug's the way to go. Kind of braising them, I guess. Braising them. Again, you want to keep them nice and compact. And we got nice and deep, so when this is filled with molten hot oil, yeah. we don't burn ourselves, which is, which is always nice and key. All right, let's pop this in the oven uncovered. Okay, so yeah, now we're making dirty rice. Dirt, dirty rice, we'll make it, or, or we refer to as dirt at the restaurant. Oh. This is a good base for your dirty rice and for your jambalaya, so you can kind of turn two dishes into one. Okay. Now, I'm not doing this tr the traditional way for all you traditional caged out there about to start making comments. Shut up. He, he said it, not I'm on camera. Yeah. I'm not allowed to say that. So we got a ground meat. I'm just gonna give it a little press. I'm pretty much gonna kind of make a, a big burger patty. Okay. And we're gonna grab that black pepper for me? Sure. You gonna make me do the pepper exercise again? Not all the way, but keep going. All right. Stop right there. Okay. A little salt. And I like to add my spices right now because when you sear them off in the pan, they're gonna really wake them up. Get nice and aromatic. Right, just, just like toasting your black peppercorns or sweating your sofrito, same thing. This is cumin, cayenne pepper, and black pepper. We got a couple of tablespoons of hot Vegetable oil. Hot vegetable oil. This lesson teaches you again about the searing of the proteins, the, the Maillard reaction, the good, the caramelization. This step will help you, and not only you make your dirty rice better, but it'll make your, your beef stroganoff better. It'll make your chili better. It'll, it'll make your, I'm not lying about this, it'll make your hamburger helper better. Not to mention, we're actually gonna turn this, we're act, after we sear it real hard and brown it all up, we're actually gonna start to braise it. So even though it might look a little dry, yeah. once we add our liquid, it's actually gonna braise that meat out, which is gonna, again, improve your stroganoff game, your chili game, and your hamburger helper game. So yeah. this is a great lesson, so pay attention. Now, this is another thing people like to do. People like to just start, start messing with it right now. Don't mess with it. Let it sit. Let it go, let it sear off. So don't worry about like keeping the patty whole since we're gonna be breaking this up yeah. later on. But see, this is what I'm talking about. As, as you know, get a good hard sear. Nice my art on that. At this point, once, once both sides are seared, I just start giving a good chop. Yeah. 
Is this, would you call this a one pot dish? I mean, you gotta make the rice. You gotta make the rice. Now, see, this is where I, I differentiate because I'm making this in the restaurant style. Mm. Traditionally, you would make your gravy, put your raw rice in it, put extra moisture in it, and then bake it off and it will all come together. Yeah, that's traditional. So all you traditional occasions, I just said it, back up. But would you say, this seems like this would be easy. A absolutely, this is where to go. You have your rice cooked, one pot dish. Once you've had your roux made, this has an infinite shelf life. Mm. If you think about it, it's just flour and oil. But if you want, you know you're gonna make some later, save your roux, save yourself a step. Now let's say that we didn't have any roux already made. At what point are we making roux in this dish? We would make it either beforehand, yeah. or we make it at the same time we're searing. Okay. So, all right, now that we got all of our brown bits, mm -hmm. nice and brown. Beautiful. We can add some of this trinity. Oh, yes. That's not gonna smell horrible. Nope, and some of this garlic. Now, we're at a pretty low temperature now, so I'm not worried about my garlic burning. Yeah, this doesn't seem like garlic. And there's so much moisture going on in here with the steam from the vegetables and all that. Right. It doesn't seem like it's gonna be that big of an issue. And this again, this starts to smell really good. All we're doing for here, we're looking for just like the onions to get a little translucent and sweat it down, and then we'll go from there. All right. So now I'm adding the roux after our vegetables are properly cooked. I'm just gonna warm that roux up a little bit. It's, it's already a proper color, but I know that trying to emulsify some cold roux in water doesn't work very well. So we're just gonna let it warm up gently. Bear me. Right air. We got like two cups of chicken stock here. Two cups of chicken. Homemade, high quality, slaved over that chicken Oh, stock. good God. We didn't have the cameras rolling for it, but we were- We, we were totally made that. Whew. We, ra we even raised and killed the chicken. It was the saddest day of my life, but it's gonna make a good dish. All right, and just like our gumbo, we're gonna let this simmer, so that roux cooks out. Nice. And not to mention our beef is gonna braise out. Yep. Again, enhancing our the quality of our dirty rice base, or dirt gravy. Dirt gravy. So how long is this going for? Sorry. Uh, probably just about 45 minutes. 45 minutes? Yep. And how, our, this probably has another 45 minutes. gumbo probably has 45 minutes, and the rions probably have 45 minutes. Awesome. All right, so we got our dirty rice base. It's, it's all cooked down. It's still a little on the gravy side. That's yeah. that's okay. And then we'll just stir some rice in there. How much rice do you think? Well, I, it's almost about one to one, but it's, I always kind of lean lean on the little extra meat side of things. But you can really, it's kind of up to your taste. Yeah. And really, you just kind of want to mix that in there. And this is why, we don't, again, we don't skim any of the grease. Yeah. The, even the little bits of grease in there are really going to season that rice. Mm. You really want to get all these, all these chunks of white rice, you really want to kind of smash down. Yeah. You don't want your dirty rice to look all uneven. You get shamed for uneven dirty rice. And we always taste test. Yes. Making sure it's good before we serve it. I think we swap spoon for Oh, uh -huh. we're safe. It's such a nice, easy little meal though. A totally easy, I mean, a pack of ground beef and some rice and some veggies. Yeah. A little, little dark roux, don't be scared of the dark roux. And now we can make it into a real meal by turning it into right. Jambalaya. Jambalaya. And you notice the heat has also dissipated a bit. Yeah. So we added our gravy, we added our rice, sucked up that good gravy. Just you guys. Good, rich. It just has that little bit of heat that I was talking about. Like mm -hmm. great Cajun food just has like that, it informs the heat where it's not overwhelming the flavor of the dish. You're not paying attention just to pain. You just feel that warmth. Like that's, that's indicative of just such great. You've got to be able to taste everything. Otherwise, why do we add it? So, yeah. so you taste the onion, I taste the garlic. The cumin comes in there quite nicely. Yeah, this isn't hot ones. We're just, we're just trying to enjoy our food. <laughs> so this is just straight up dirty rice. This is straight up dirty rice. It's the number one crowd pleaser of all time. Everybody loves this dish. If you don't like this dish, something's wrong. Get the yeah. <laughs> so we're about, we're real close. Now the caramel's just right. The pork belly needs to go a little longer, but what you gotta worry about is these are done right before they're burnt. Yeah. So these are gonna be that, that get a good caramelized lacquered look. Pop that over, for me. crack her back in. There we are. This is looking right. Uh-huh. Oh my God. Oof. That makes me happy right there. Now how long has this gotta cool off? Uh, until until you when you put it in your mouth and you don't go. Ah, 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 ah. Uh, we should we should probably put some on some plates though to, to get them cool down. Oh my god! I'm back at your restaurant. I'm 14 years old again, just figuring out how my body works. And... <laughs> huh? So we're not getting rid of the fat at all in this? Um, actually, the, most of the fat's being left in there. Oh, excellent. Uh, oh, this is ready to go. Th yeah, th that's ready to go. Any rice in that bowl or? Yeah, we just... I'll, I'll let you do it. Thank 
Last step is to turn this dirty rice into jambalaya. And that's real simple. Um, add, add a little sausage, we're gonna turn the heat back on a little bit. All right. The sausage is already cooked, so all we need to do is warm it back up. And then um, you can chop this chicken up if you like, but honestly, I just like to toss it in the pan and either serve the chicken thighs whole if you want like something looking like a, an entree, or if not, just hit them with your spoon unceremoniously. Just beat up the chicken a little bit. You can get those juices out of there. Keep the skin on it. This is Cajun food. Don't, you don't have to be delicate to it. There's one thing I'd say you're not being, it's delicate. Right? Yeah, yeah, I don't really do the delicate. Don't call me up for delicate. You can call me anything you want, just don't call me late for dinner. Now, the golden rule of, of, of Cajun cooking is, you see, I, I haven't mixed any seafood in my gumbo yeah, no, the, or my the, dirty rice the or my jambalaya. Now, if we, if we did seafood, it would be only seafood. And yes, this is a rule, so pay attention. <laughs> Cajuns, we don't like to mix shrimp with our sausage. If you put shrimp in that, you're only gonna taste the sausage. Okay. So it's gonna get lost. So when we make a seafood gumbo, we actually call it a stew. So we know the differentiate was stew just has seafood and a gumbo will have meat. Now we have good old fashioned jambalaya. Again, you got chicken, you got sausage, you got ground beef, you can make these dishes. Nothing scary. A little bit of roux is not gonna hurt you. Make it the slow way first. You got it. Looks ready. Hmm. I look ready. Ready to eat. And we have here a collection of some of the most beautiful, easy Cajun dishes. Cajun. Cajun. We got it right, yay! That's I've ever made or seen made. Like this. Thank you. This, this is absolutely gorgeous. This is one of my favorite things in the world. I'm gonna have some alone time with this once the cameras stop rolling. Well, dude, thank you so much for coming out and showing me how to make all this, especially these, because these have been a mystery for me. I know you've been you 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 were you were asking me about them. And even, even though my recipe is a little more detailed, it's a lot more detailed than the recipe I got. Yeah, no, So you're, you're welcome for figuring this out. You upgraded this. It, 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 took a, it took a minute, but I'm very happy with that. Yeah. I'm one of the few people that does it, and it's like one of the signature dishes at the meadery. It's never going anywhere. Don't worry about it. Thank God. Yeah. And thank you for having me. I'm having a great time. Thanks Boom. so much for coming Butter through. Bang. Next time, we're going to learn about Creole cuisine. From who? I don't know. Okay. Creole cuisine, take three. Cajun cuisine, take three. Creole cuisine, take four. Cajun. This is Creole Cuisine, take five. Cajun. Creole food, take six. Cajun. Creole food, uh, take six. Cajun. The Cajun Cuisine, take seven. Creole. Wait. Creole cooking, take eight. Cajun. Creole cooking, take nine. Cajun. Uh, Creole food, take ten. Cajun. Uh, Creole Cuisine, take eleven. Cajun Cuisine, take eleven.